Listen up Rangers, welcome to the Geek Chest. My name is Zilla, and have you ever wanted to protect your water from a giant firebird's overbearing temperatures? Well now, we have an insulated bottle for you. Cause today's video is sponsored by the coldest water bottles. You ever just get a little too thirsty working on a project? Kinda like these guys up here. Go to get a drink of water and realize that it's the same temperature as your 80 degree basement? Which doesn't sound very appealing. Well, with the coldest water company, these bottles have been engineered for six years. Six whole years. And with our elite team of engineers based in Naples, Florida, they have created the coldest bottle. We also have coldest ice packs. There's the coldest coolers. There's even cold pillows. And they also have coffee, which is perfect for this product because it also takes heat very well. With these bottles holding cold temperatures up to 36 hours or more, depending on the size of the bottles, even up to 100. And also being able to hold heat for over 12. Plus the lids are even fully insulated with their 2.0 lid technology, which keeps water colder longer which is a first ever. And what's great too is the bottles don't sweat, which is great for my soft fabric puppet hands. I really don't need to build up moisture and mildew. That'd be gross for Steve. Also, they're very strong and durable. I'll demonstrate. hi -ya! See, no damage at all. Also super odor resistant and don't build up bacteria, unlike the inside of me, which is gross to think about. Ugh, it's all Steve's sweat hand in here. <laughs> And look, it floats. It floats pretty well. So if you guys are interested in picking up your own bottles, again, they have varying sizes depending on what you need. If you like one for hiking, camping, going to the gym, very many options. Heck, even just reviewing things. God, I need water all the time. So there'll be a link in the description below. And also we got our own discount code, which is Geek10. If you put that in, save 10% on checkout. And we'd like to thank The Coldest Water for sponsoring this video. And now, onto the show. Listen up, Raiders. Welcome to the Geek Chest. My name's Steve. My name's Arnaz. Also, this is sort of blocking me. We can't have that. Star of the show right here. Aww. It makes more money than you do. <laughs> Probably. I, I wish. But anyways, <laughs> today we're going to be going over our the top 10 most expensive Monster Arts figures. Uh, criteria for this, it had to be sold recently. We went with eBay prices. And it had to make sense because there was a couple outliers, like there was a Mecha Godzilla seventy four that sold for nine grand recently. That was yeah. Somebody's not getting paid. Yeah, somebody wasn't getting paid for that one. But uh, if there was a lot of them in the same price range, is kind of what we went with. Yeah, it, it couldn't have been just one that sold for nine thousand. You know, there was the like rest were like fifty bucks. <laughs> yeah, we would go with the few that were like you know fifty five, sixty, and then you know that right there. That, that made sense. So if I was going to be going to sell one of my Monster Arts figures, this is kind of where I'd want to be. Maybe a little bit less because I know what I paid for them, but this is generally what I would expect to try to get a whole, out of my figures. So if you guys like to use this for selling your own figures, go for it. I can't guarantee you'd get these prices because eBay's a fickle mistress. Yeah, she fluctuates up and down. So I definitely have gotten more than I thought I would ever for a figure on there, and then I've definitely gotten a lot less than I thought a lot less than I thought it would get. So, but again, these are averages of what we've seen for sold listings. Um, I think they all sold between June and July. So we'll be doing uh, NECA's and some more lists, but NECA one will be a little different just because there's some weirdness to it. I would say. Yeah, we're gonna do an X plus one. That one's gonna be just specifically what I own because there's. Way too many variants of all the monsters to really try to figure out prices. Oh, yeah. This was a little easier because I literally own almost all of them anyways. Outside of the variants. And the variants usually don't go up or down a lot compared to the regular releases. Well, even like an X Plus, when I was looking at it the other day, some of the figures are not even like kaiju related. It's just like... You know, X Plus this that sold for like three, four grand. It's like your Chiho. Your Chiho was made by list. Oh, yeah. I bought off you. It was it was good. It was close. Yeah, that's what I mean. And it's like it's not even monster related. It also but... made me depressed because almost a majority of them aren't even close to being worth as much as with that mo the ones on this list. It's pretty sad. Which sucks, at least in terms of like collecting, because it's like there's a there's bigger differences. Like my most expensive worth valued X plus blows away a monster arts, but in general, most of my monster arts are worth the same, if not more. <laughs> like, bro, we'll, we'll start getting into it. Um, so, let me get back on my team. 
So for number 10 is the weird one on the list because it's technically a Monster Arts, but it's technically a Robot Spirits too. I think was the mix. It's the Tamashi Mix poster Mechagodzilla. Oh, the poster version? Yeah, the one that, oh, it's Shigokin. So it's a Shigokin and a Monster Arts put together. How much? So the going rate for one of those is $317 if you want one in the box. Which? Wait, wait. <laughs> huh? So, number 10. We're starting at $317. I, I heard that, but what's that price again? $317. Again, I was just mentioning I own all these, so... Mine are all open. <laughs> and it'd be used for videos, so I couldn't charge. But... Oh, my God. If you got one in the package, you're already doing pretty good. Uh, wait, wait. Before we get into Solus, how much did you pay when it came out, Steve? Uh, he was one of the more expensive ones, if I remember right. I want to say if it was like closer to two, it was like one fifty two for him. <sighs> like, uh, I'd say in terms of bang for my buck, it's one of the worst ones because I maybe uh got like an extra fifty to seventy percent out of the value of it over what it originally came out at. There's definitely some out here that like you bought it when it first came out. You're doing pretty freaking solid, which. I kind of thought this baby would Unreal. be higher. Unreal. Unreal. Like, I'm surprised it's only number 10 because it's such a unique figure. It's also a fairly large figure and but the, there's a lot of complexity, but it's not like a movie. It's not something that's seeked out, though, because it is unique. Well, that just, it wasn't in a movie. That's a lot of the reasons why, like, almost the entire list isn't variants. Hmm. Like, it's not like the umpteenth million Godzilla that came out because... And everybody wants the regular release. Yeah. All right, let's move down the list. Also, sadly, like the aliens and predators didn't really make the list either. The predator was closer to being higher, uh, high enough, but like nothing else that's like monsters that isn't Godzilla related really made the list. Except for number nine is the Peter Jackson's King Kong. What you are you talking about? Like, like the original one? Original release King Kong. They did. Well, the one that I, I had a. Uh, we had a subscriber that was kind enough to send me one, and that's how I got a hold of one. Hmm. I had to just clean it up and fix it, but I still appreciate it nonetheless. Uh, but the going rate for one of those is $320. There's not much difference. No, but also you could have got it originally, I think, for like 50 bucks. Oh. 50, less than 50. Whoa. So in terms of your investment, you're doing good. That's what, 600%? Yeah. You made on it? What else we got? All right, number eight is, like we mentioned at the beginning of the video, is the Mechagodzilla 1974. Seen one that sold for nine grand, which will make it easily the most expensive monster it's ever. But on average, you're looking probably about three fifty for that guy. So somebody was just yanking somebody's chain. More than likely, you'll get some people that'll just like jokingly bid up a bid and then never pay for it. Yeah, but that ruins your account, though. It does, but then you just make a new account and call it a day. It's not like. It doesn't hurt you as a buyer to do stuff like that, which is the only thing that sucks about eBay. It hurts you as a seller if you try to do stuff like that. Because you get too much flack, they're going to shut off your account. Yeah. And then the review, because like what helps you as a seller on eBay is your reviews. Like that's how you get people to go. Like All my reviews are positive, thankfully. I haven't had any issues. And it was kind of surprising that th that was the expensive one, at least out of like the Showa Kaijus. Yeah. Because there's nothing really to go along with them. Granted, Mechagodzilla is very popular. Well, especially since the new movie came out. I w but I would have thought the Hasty one maybe would be more sought after. Just because there's more monsters to go with it. Again, it makes it unique. Not a lot of people pre-ordered it or whatever. And then when you're selling it, it's hard to find. Yeah, because there's also going to be... Uh, some of them were like Bluefin exclusives. Or Bandai Premium ex web exclusives, those usually make them a little bit... There's less of a run, which makes them more money in the long run. So for number seven, was one of the figures I was very impressed with when we first came out, which was the Batra and Mothra Larva 2-pack. I love the Batra. The Mothra isn't anything that special, but I think as a set, it made it worth it, and the Batra is really good. How much is this trash? 351 Beats oh. back to Godzilla by a buck is what I've seen the average for. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Which, funny enough, made it the most expensive Mothra item to get. So, it's cheaper to get Batra, Bat, the Batras together, and it's cheaper to get the Mothra together, but the Mothra and the, lar the Batra larva does. It's the box, too. It may, it's the reason why that one's more pricey. And I think it was just because it's probably hard to get. Yeah. Because there's so many... Like, a lot of the people, if you bought Mothra and you bought Batra, this is how you had to get the larvas. Or you had to rebuy your Mothra and Batra again to get the Mothra and larva. So, you like, you had to do this. It's the only way to get it. Yeah. Well, smart. Which I think is what really helps keep the price up. That is just, I think they personally, they look a little bit better than the colored versions. What number are we on? That was seven. For six... This one I kind of thought was going to be higher, but for Destroya, you can get one. It's usually about three seventy five. Which that sounds about right. The reason I thought it was going to be higher because I think it's one of the more fragile Monster Arts figures. So the I crystals? would think more people would break them. The crystals? Destroya. Oh, Destroya. Oh, that's because yeah. a lot of people snap the wing parts off and stuff. So I would think that would bump up the value because there's probably less, like, mint ones on the market than a lot of the other monster arts maybe outside of some other things on this list <laughs> i always thought he'd be definitely up there and especially because people use them to make bagans and stuff for customs like it's got a lot more versatility than some of the other monster arts figures in terms of why just would you destroy a 400 dollar figure never mind Next. Spoiler alert, we're going to be doing one. <laughs> I said I got to start working on that this week. It's for a customer. But for number five, one of my favorite monster arts of all time. Personally for me, I like the original release of it. I thought everybody kind of crapped on it for, like, I get the reason why some people hate it because he had the bad redneck on some of them. But I still thought the mold was phenomenal. Look at his face. And then the better one, which is number five, is the Shin Godzilla Awakened version with all the accessories packs. Uh, he was a web exclusive, which is one of the reasons why he's the most expensive one out of the Shins. How much? Uh, you, can just get him. you can get one for the low, low price of 430 bucks. Oh, so now this is where the money starts going <laughs> up. <huh? laughs> that was a big jump. Just Whoa. a bit. He went over from three seventy five to four thirty between six and five, uh, which again makes sense. It's a very popular monster. It's the best version to get yeah. out of all of them. To be fair, and to be honest, probably it, it might be my most favorite monster it's figure, which is why it, like never leaves the case because I don't want to do anything to it. Did you ever sell that blue pit of monstrosity? Yeah, he's still hanging out in the basement. We use him for stuff. You're supposed to sell him, Steve. I know, I'm working on it. I was trying to sell You're him. You're not working on it. I was trying it. to sell him to the guy that uh, that I did that commission for. Th that was for that one, but he wanted one before, like, mint in the box. So, <laughs> I ended up ordering one, so I had an extra one handing around for a few. So, he's still handing around. We'll, uh, we'll get to it eventually. Number four. Or I got to put money into the account, one or the other. Uh, number four is another variant of Godzilla. But this one's the one with your crystals. Is Space Godzilla. I know he was expensive because when I was looking at the list the other day, while I was on a toilet, and I was like, holy bejeebus. And almost all these ones that I'm talking about original release, for the most part. Uh, which his price is four fifty, is what you can get for that one on average. I will say, speaking of Godzilla's, honorable mention is the Burning Godzilla. He was close. And he was one of the only ones that it was the special color version was the expensive one. The one with the smoke coming off of him? Yeah. He's actually worth more than the one I got that came with the vehicles. What? And has a worse paint job, but he's worth yeah. more. How? Because he comes with the smoke effects. At least that's what I'm assuming. I, I think people find that more desirable than... Because I don't like it because he's glossy. Oh, yeah. But smoke effects are cool. Uh, but the original release for Space Godzilla is kind of hard to get a hold of. Still looks really nice. It comes with the crystals and stuff for the ground. That's why, because he comes with a little bit more than an average. Yeah, which is weird because the other one came with Little Godzilla. So you got him and Little Godzilla, but I think the colors are a little more off. Hmm. 
than what you got with the original release. So for number two, uh, sorry, number, number three, three, we have what is the most expensive monster arts to come out when it first released, which is Biolante, which used to be number one yeah. by a long shot. I remember you were like was selling for like eight nine hundred dollars before the second one came out. Yeah, then the second one came out and tanked the price on it. <laughs> wow. Still, you're looking at about four hundred sixty seven dollars for that Biolante. That's not bad. But it's definitely like half off what it used to be going for. Yeah, I, I, I know I've seen people uh, channel like uh, discussing on the channel and stuff that have paid that much to get a whole one. Well, I was telling you to sell it when it was going for nine hundred before that new one came out. But I didn't want to sell. It's the first release. It's my. It was my literal first Monster Arts I ever had. You could have sold it. My first. And then Monster now Arts. could have bought two of them. True, but still, I liked it. I probably wouldn't have got that much anyway. I don't know. It was selling for nine hundred. People were asking for like eleven hundred for it. Yeah, no, there's the my luck though. Yeah, Steve would be like. Two hundred dollars. Oh, <laughs> I think my starting bid would be four hundred bucks if I put it up. Uh, which makes sense. It, it's it was expensive figure to begin with, and it's doubled in value. Well, it was which all, is usually what happens. Also, I remember a lot of people broke the pieces on him. So yeah, it's pretty fragile. She's pretty fragile. Uh, for number two is also a very fragile figure, which surprisingly, when doing this list, uh, number two is Mecha King Ghidorah. Regular Ghidorah, you could get it for less than what three ten. You could get it for like less than three hundred bucks, which kind of surprised me a bit. Why? Which is uh, it's a popular figure, plus it's a popular kaiju. So it's just it's for monster arts wise, it's one of the more sought after ones. Then it's fragile as crap. But there's so many of them out there, though. There's only two versions. No, no, like so many copies of it. I'm saying that's why it's well. Cheap. It's, it's, it's the same odd copies as Space Godzilla. Yeah. And more people definitely recognize King Ghidorah. And King Ghidorah, again, was the more fragile figure. Like, I have original release, and I'm terrified to move the wings. <laughs> Crack snap Because <laughs> a pop. lot of people broke them. So, again, I think it'd be worth more because, again, just getting a mint condition one would be a little bit harder than... Remember how many times we messed around with yours? And now it's like, oh, I can't touch it, I'm scared. It, it's another one just hangs out of the case we don't talk about. Uh, Mecha King Ghidorah is number two, though. Uh, it only ever had one release. Which I think keeps the value up on it a lot. Plus, it's a big figure. It's expensive when it came out. Again, helps to keep the value on it a lot. And I, it's a pretty popular kaiju, too. I thought they would have re-released it when the movie came out. Because that would have been a great opportunity for them to sell a lot of copies. But they didn't. It's one of the only ones that hasn't really had like a special colored yeah. variant. Which is odd to me. Alright, so for number one. Drum roll. Is... Probably one of my least favorite monster arts ever made. <laughs> Probably the most, actually. We gotta update that list. Which is the 2019 King Ghidorah. So was selling on average for 550 bucks. Why? Oh yeah, for number two, it was 529 is what my could, uh, King Ghidorah was going for. 2019, 580. Why? Movie's popular. I'm not saying the movie's not popular. I figure it was ex fairly expensive when it first came out. It was, but not 500 uh, Yeah, no. you couldn't catch me paying that much. No. The figure itself is not worth that much. I, it's it's an impressive figure. It's not detailed worth a damn, <laughs> though. Well, that's because it's so massive. Well, Biolante's got... At least Biolante's got paint on it. Well, yeah, but you can still... I mean, you can tell... You can tell Biolante's Biolante... Ghidorah is Ghidorah. You can tell what they are. You can tell what they are, but they, it's not right. What do you want from them? I wanted some dry brushing, some highlighting, maybe a little bit more air brushing instead of it just being orangish. They like suckered you orange guys in it and you bought And some it. face paint. Well, if you don't like it, sell it. But I, I wouldn't be able to get it back. I have everybody from the movie. I need them. You don't need them. I need it. No, you don't. Yep. What are you going to do when I go to your house to steal it all? That'd be sad. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Ardass selling a bunch of monsters for like cheap? Well, I was like, when do you get Monster Arts figures? He's just like on Instagram. Like, first person that gives me 50 bucks. Buy some Chinese food. We're good to go. Sold. And 
it it makes sense because again, it's only on one release. Yeah, it's very popular. It was a hard figure to get a hold of. I remember selling out pretty quickly. It sold out really quick. It's thankfully like the new movie stuff isn't that bad right now. And the Mecha Godzilla, they put up more pre orders over time. Yeah, which I think will help the price on that guy. But I can see the Mecha Godzilla getting up to. I don't know about that that high, but he probably could get up to t- uh, top ten for sure. I can definitely see doubling its value pretty easy. Yeah. Same with the Kong, though. Godzilla, I find it'll, maybe it'll be a little bit harder. Yeah, Godzilla. Godzilla's a little... Uh, because you have, like, the 2019, that's pretty much the same figure. You got that one. There's multiple versions of the 2019. Hell, a 14's still going to do you all right. And, again, Naka also made him that looks all right. So he's got yep. a lot of competition. Kong, on the other hand, don't really got much. No, that's what makes it special. That's why we broke it. <laughs> now he broke. He got broken because he lost the fight. If Godzilla would have lost, we would have smashed for Godzilla. The thing, though, that blew my mind is that we threw it off the second story, and he survived. He lost a leg. We hit him with a baseball bat. Just fell apart. I good job, Monster Arts. Like I said, I never want to hear people complain that Monster Arts is super fragile. Yeah, it's on average a lot of the problems I see. It's usually could have been solved with just being a little bit more careful with it. People are like, oh, it broke. Yeah, just like if you have joint stiff, make sure you heat it up. Yada yada yada. Because they can take a little bit of beating. But and to be fair though, that part that broke, I've seen be a common break. Yep. On it though. But anyways, let us know in the comment section below if you guys have ever sold Monster Arts. What do you guys, I don't know if you want to divulge what you sold them for. But if you guys have gotten a decent amount for them, or if you guys are surprised at what some of these prices are, let us know in the comment section below. And help us defeat those kaiju by hitting that like button. Also help support the channel without actually donating. But if you'd like to donate, we got a Patreon. Also at Pinterest, Instagram, and Facebook. Guys, let's keep up the day with channel and donate. We really appreciate it. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.